Ladies and gentlemen, sound like <laughs> Omar Isso. Young Michael. A bodybuilder. Pro bodybuilder. Bodybuilder. Alberto Nunez. No, dude. Bro, you chill out. We're Marshall on 24 7. We're going beast mode. Yeah. Uh, there's something called Bleacher Report, which uh, you were shared on. You were featured uh, as the Red was. Ranger. Yeah, it's Bleacher Report. Well, and then there's uh, one other one uh, that writes really good articles. Browsers? Browsers and Playboy have great articles, but. There's a different one. I, I can't think of it. Comment below because you guys are going to say, Mike, you're an idiot. It's this one. Uh, yeah. But they do awesome articles. Kind of like, what would I tell myself? These are professional athletes. What would I tell myself as a rookie in the league? Or sure. what would I tell 12-year-old uh, uh, little Omar? Yeah. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, and then maybe I'll touch on it myself. Um, we've all been training almost a decade, maybe a little over a decade. Uh, we've all studied this uh, pretty through and through as much as we can. Continued learning, obviously, but we're all... Um, somewhat advanced in this fitness game. Mr. Alberto Nunez, what would you tell uh, your younger self and what would you fix maybe in your training your early days? Mm. See, this is why I think sports are great and I, it sucks that uh, they're not prioritized as much as they used in regards to like development. You learn so many lessons through sports. Yeah. You know, like for example, like uh, you're really slow and a bad athlete. You're gonna have to figure a different way to be effective. Find your strengths and work with that. And uh, that's that's probably the one thing that if I go back to this bodybuilding thing, like I wanted to be a freaking mass monster at some point. Yeah, yeah. And I went through these bulking phases because the way it works, if you get to 200 on stage or 180, and if you get to 220, if you're willing to work hard enough to get yeah. to 220, which just means you like, eat a shit ton, right? You're going to compete at 200, and I'm like, I'm going to keep pushing it and pushing it. So you're it chasing down it. Ronnie Coleman. Basically, and it's like, it, it you're like Ronnie, you're going down. Way. Clubber so, Lang style, you're like, you're going down. <laughs> I was basically like a six foot two guy trying to be a center in basketball. It makes yeah, yeah. no sense, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, I think play to your strengths. Like, find out what you're good at and, and try to get better at that. And I think this goes for anything else in life. Yeah, know? yeah. Like, don't try to be something that you're not, you're going to suck at it. Um, so I, I think that's probably if I could go back it's like alright dude you're small you're frail uh, but there's other things that perhaps you can do to make an effective bodybuilder an effective uh, strength athlete um, and finally it took me about a whole decade to learn <laughs> that one um, and like now that's just how I do it when it comes to not just like my, my training but when it comes to other things in life yeah. if I suck at it yeah. dude like I'll leave it up to someone I'll outsource that shit like let someone else I'll hire someone to fix the car because I'm yeah. bad at fixing things yeah. Yeah. I talk yeah. about stuff like that here all the time about uh, you know my, my opinion on true confidence one I think Honestly, confidence would solve world peace. Not everyone's ever going to have confidence if uh -huh. we can't solve world peace. But true confidence is, is knowing who you are and knowing who you are not. Uh, mm -hmm. And you and I off camera a couple of days, we've chatted a lot, but talked a lot about self-awareness. Uh -huh. And those kind of play a role in uh, obviously growing as a human being. We can spend all this time in the gym, spend all this time drinking whey protein. But if you're not focusing on improving all aspects of your life, you're not really uh, living or you're not really living that grind as everyone else. Five, five, seven, four, seven. You guys want to high, grind and hustle and wake up at 5 a.m. and drink egg yolks uh, raw and go do push-ups? Stuff into the ground within about three days. Rather than trying to be a better person yeah, and mastering absolutely. your craft, uh, 360, uh, Omar Isof, what would you tell young eyebrows? Thank you, young Michael Farb. I would say uh, my best advice would be lifting weight is not about lifting weight. And what I mean by Mr. that... Mr. Miyagi. Oh, <laughs> wax on. Whack on, whack like, off. Like water. And what I mean is that the life lessons you learn when it comes to lifting apply far beyond lifting if you pay attention. I actually think that training is one of the most objective ways to get better and prove to yourself that if you're disciplined enough, focused enough, you can make progress. Pick any other discipline people want to become really good at. So I love music, but becoming, let's say, an exceptional jazz musician takes beyond 10,000 hours. There's no real shortcut. You can have that intuitive uh, skill. You can have that ear, rhythm, whatever, but it requires so many hours. Training, no matter who you are, if you put in effort a few times per week for several months, for one year, you will notice, you can objectively quantify what you're doing. I actually think training in ways compared to other disciplines is far easier to make progress on. And so once you see all those mechanisms of developing the habits, uh, learning that motivation wanes, right? It's not something that's always there. It's more having the discipline that you instill within yourself that keeps you on that path. All those kind of life qualities that I think good lifters inherently lo uh, know will spread into other aspects of your life. And so I've become more regimented, more focused, all those things, because I kind of have 
not at all ADD, but as you know, I'm I'm a I'm a hyped up person. I got a lot of different goals. I'm always kind of on, and I think training has calm me down has allowed me to focus on different things and become better at them so i'd say the best lesson that i could take away from lifting when i said lifting isn't about lifting is that you have to take a look at that long game we all probably got into it for the same thing we wanted to like look better uh, feel better and those still are things that we want to do yeah but it extends far beyond that we're the type of people like i if there's no camera on i'd still be lifting uh 10 years from now i'll still be lifting in some capacity I'm here to stay. I'm not kind of that quick in it to win it and then peace the fuck out. Like, I like, you know, get some six pack uh, abs, get my Tinder profile lit, like, have a great summer. And then I'm like, you know what? I have that uh, surface level of fulfillment. I'm after that emotional, as Bruce Lee says, content. I like it. I like it. Uh, I guess for myself, uh, on a fitness level, okay. a purely fitness level, it would be uh, just to enjoy uh, the process a little more and also. Uh, pick one goal at a time. I spent my uh, spun my wheels for years, from probably 18 to about 25, even um, cutting, dieting, wanting to get strong, but not want to be too fat. Doing this, not not getting too lean because I don't want to lose my strength, and I even struggle with that still mentally. Yeah. Uh, so just picking a goal, especially when you're younger. Just eat food and train your face off for three or four years. You're gonna have your best physique and your best gains in your 30s, maybe even 40s, if you do it that way. Anyways, yeah. um, which leads me to I guess more of my life lesson of of. Um, something I learned from sports. Perdo and I relate well on sports. Omar and I relate well on everything else besides sports. Uh, that my high school basketball coach uh, taught me, Dean Stark, shout out. Uh, we talked a lot about sacrificing for the unknown. Uh, when you play sports, much like lifting, uh, you want to go to the playoffs, you want to win the championship, you want to do all this. But there's so many factors you cannot control. Um, doesn't mean that each practice every day, each game every day leading up to that, that you can't give it your all, that you have to sacrifice. You have to wake up a little bit earlier. You have to uh, get a couple more jump shots in. You have to be a better teammate. You have to do these little things on the way up to hit this goal that may or may not happen. It may not even right. be possible. It may not even be possible for us to win a championship, but if you don't do these things just in case to build that up, uh, then you absolutely have no chance. So that's kind of the patience of the game. And I knew that in basketball uh, for some reason, but couldn't translate it to lifting, which relates to what your point was. Once you get it in lifting, uh, and as you grow as an adult, yep. which I hit 23, 24, 25, I start to figure out life a little bit more. Uh, you understand that that begins to translate elsewhere. That if you work hard and do the correct things morally and try to be a good person, that hopefully in the long run, maybe you don't become the president, you won't become a billionaire, but you live a fulfilled life because you ended up Assistant doing manager things. manager at McDonald's. It's something. At least you're flipping, but not flipping burgers anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just bossing bitches you don't want around. Those losers, yeah. yeah. Flip those burgers. We said three fries. <laughs> Uh, that you begin to I lost my train of thought because now so I'm sorry. fat and I'm thinking about chicken nuggets I'm so sorry buddy uh, you were saying about chasing that unknown and that at some point no matter what if you have those qualities you'll at least be able to accomplish something you might so not be the least, president so, I got you so yeah so you I may, may not yeah you may not actually hit these goals you may not be a billionaire even though that's people are like I'm going to work hard and I'm going to drive a Ferrari well maybe, maybe that won't happen but you will end up uh, having the respect of humans, you'll have the respect of your peers, you'll be surrounded by good people, and you'll also find fulfillment and happiness along the way because you did the right thing, because you worked hard, because you had patience along the way. This is the Zen couch yeah, right here. This is a great example, like exactly what you said. We all started training for like these different reasons, these yeah. things we thought we wanted, and look where we ended up. Yeah. That was not the goal. Yeah, we basically ended up in, in a similar world, a yeah. similar place. Uh, and none of it was completely unrelated. And I think also that's why we get along as friends, uh, business, everything else, uh, because we believe in the long run of just doing the right thing. You know, we also had conversations uh, off camera of, uh, you weren't there at lunch, you were doing, sorry, sleeping. <laughs> but uh, just doing things for the right reason, you know, uh, whether it's um, not selling you guys horse shit, uh, fat burners, just to make a buck because we don't believe in it. Yeah. Uh, rather just put out free content or, or, or coaching or whatever we it might be to give you. We could have made a lot more money selling out a long time ago. 100%, but then that's, yeah, that, they, that's yeah. not the sacrifice. The sacrifice is not the quick buck. The sacrifice is 10 years from now, we'll feel good about ourselves. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we'll also be billionaires in 10 years. But if that doesn't happen, at least yeah. we can turn back and say, uh, Berto said this exact same thing at lunch. You, 10 years ago, you, you feel comfortable with what your peers think of you. You feel comfortable Completely. about what your loved ones think about you yeah. and you feel good about yourself. That's 100%. It feels good whenever people come up and they say like, oh man, like, you help me out with form or whatever, all those different training goals. Yeah. Like it feels really good. Yeah, and we gain nothing from it besides the fact that we're doing what we love and sharing it with you guys, sharing our experiences. We went on a journey here, Mike. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that journey. <laughs> Thumbs up.
Follow the homies. Like the video. They're in the description. Like, what do you think? How many likes do you think we can get? Dude, okay, so I want 1,500 likes. I think I was thinking 25. 2,500 likes. I was thinking 35. Thousand. Okay, that's Mike. Okay, 25. Yeah, yeah. 25. We're, we're 20, sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. 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 2,500 likes. And what's going to happen? You know, 2,500 likes and we'll give away five free programs to some people in the comment section. So I was going to I was gonna one-up you. I don't know if you like this 2,500. I say 3,500 and we're going to get Omar and myself in Colorado. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, at some point, sure. All right. 3,500 yeah. likes and we're representing Birdo. Five free programs. In the land of Colorado. Appreciate you guys. We're out of here. <laughs>